So Apple just rolled out Keyframer, a tool that lets you turn static SVG images into vibrant CSS animations by using LLMs and more. I think this tool promises to be a game changer for both seasoned professionals and novices. And it also includes all kinds of collaborative features that seem to be great for design work. But will it really be as innovative as Apple claims it is? Watch the whole video, folks, and let's find out. Exploring Keyframer. Okay, first of all, Keyframer is powered by GPT-4. And as I already mentioned, this new AI can transform static SVG images into dynamic CSS animations in just a few simple steps. We can't show you official clips of Keyframer just yet, as the AI hasn't been officially released. However, we'll try to include relevant clips from other AI and software to give you a sense of Keyframer's features. Now, here's the gist of it. Keyframer uses machine learning to automate and improve the process of keyframe animation. Keyframes are essentially the cornerstones of animation, defining the starting and ending points of any smooth transition. So, how does the model work? The frames in between these keyframes are filled in using a process called interpolation. You know, traditionally creating these keyframes is a time-consuming task that requires a lot of manual work from animators. I guess this is where Keyframer can bridge the gap. Its machine learning algorithms can predict and generate these keyframes, significantly reducing the amount of manual labor required. In simple terms, imagine you're creating an animation of a bouncing ball. You would manually create the keyframes, the ball at the highest point of its bounce, and the ball when it hits the ground. The frames in between, the ball rising and falling, would need to be filled in manually, frame by frame. But you know, with Keyframer AI, you only need to create those two keyframes and the AI will fill in the rest, creating a smooth animation. I think, as for its use case, Keyframer would be a game changer in animation industries, including film, gaming, advertising, etc., since it can drastically reduce the time and resources needed to create complex animations. This could allow for quicker production times, reducing costs, and potentially even more creative possibilities as animators are freed up to focus on other aspects of their work. But what exactly does it do? According to its creators, as already mentioned, Keyframer assists in the creation of animations by automating the process of generating intermediate frames, also known as in-betweens. The AI then uses machine learning to generate all the intermediate frames, creating a smooth animation. And the greatest part is that this doesn't just apply to simple movements. The technology can handle complex transformations, change in shape, color, size, position, and more. In CSS, keyframes can be applied to a bunch of different things, from simple movements, like changing the position of an object, to more complex animations, such as creating a pulsating effect or a rotating animation. Basically, anything where there's a beginning and an ending position, and then other intermediate steps in between. So, Keyframer takes that same idea to the world of animation and allows us to easily create all the in-between steps with less effort. I guess the beauty and intuitiveness of Keyframer lies in its ability to understand the animator's intent and fill in the gaps accordingly. This level of intuitive understanding drastically reduces the amount of tedious manual work required in animation, freeing up animators to focus on the creative aspects of their work. Moreover, it allows for faster production times and can help make complex animation projects more feasible, even for small teams or individual animators. For example, imagine if you were creating a short film with multiple characters and intricate movements. With our keyframer, you would have to manually animate every single movement for each character, which could be incredibly time-consuming and daunting. But with Keyframer, you can simply set the keyframes for each character's major movements and let the software fill in the rest. This will save you a lot of time, and beyond that, it might actually be even better than ourselves when it comes to ensuring consistency and animation style throughout the project. Another benefit of Keyframer is its versatility. It can be used for all types of animation, from basic 2D cartoons to complex 3D CGI movies. And because it is cloud-based, it allows animators to work collaboratively on projects in real time, making it perfect for team projects or remote companies. I guess we're truly seeing a revolution, folks. This could potentially mean that small companies could produce movies at the level of Pixar or other industry giants with just a fraction of the resources. Can you imagine how many new movies we might be able to see in the near future?
And it can get even crazier if we are able to believe the quality of the videos produced by OpenAI Sora. I mean, imagine what could happen if we combine these two technologies. Okay, folks, what do you think about the fact that soon anyone will be able to create their own short film? Do you believe this will affect the overall quality of future audiovisual products? Personally, I think we also need to consider the likely resultant drop in quality, specifically due to these technologies becoming widely accessible in the near future. Iterative design process. So the iterative design process employed by Keyframer allows users to refine their animations through successive prompt-driven adjustments. In this way, each iteration moves closer to their creative vision. Now, Keyframer integrates user feedback at every stage, ensuring that each design iteration reflects the user's intent, as well as aligning with professional standards of animation quality. As you might think, this approach grants users granular control over the animation process, empowering them to make precise adjustments. You see, this could be critical for creative refinement as it allows for the tweaking of animations down to the smallest detail. The cool thing is that the iterative process, therefore, becomes a dialogue between the user and Keyframer AI, with the tool's suggestions and the user's feedback looping in a constructive cycle. I guess this is something that Apple has learned from ChatGPT and its famous user interface. Creative control and editing. So will this tool outright replace animators? Not at all. Keyframer AI doesn't aim to replace animators, but instead offer them a powerful tool to streamline their workflow. For example, the AI takes care of the tedious task of in-betweening, allowing animators to focus on the beginning and closing keyframes, which are the most important element of an animation. This is where the animator's skill and creativity come in, as they can control the start and end points of each movement, the pacing, timing, and overall style. And what about editing? If an animator wants to change a part of their animation, they only need to adjust the relevant keyframes. The AI will automatically update the rest of the frames to match. This could be a huge time saver in the editing process. For instance, if an animator decides to make a character wave their hand more slowly, they can adjust the keyframes to stretch the action over a longer period. Keyframer AI will then generate new in-betweens to match the updated timing. Moreover, because Keyframer AI works by understanding the animator's intent from the keyframes, it can handle changes in shape, color, position, and more. This gives animators a wide range of editing options to fine-tune their animations and achieve the exact result they want. Interestingly, one of the most exciting aspects of Keyframer AI is its potential to democratize the field of animation. Traditionally, animation has been a labor-intensive process that requires significant resources and technical expertise. This often made it inaccessible to many who might have been interested in the field but lack the necessary resources or skills. Keyframer could change all of this by automating one of the most time-consuming parts of the animation process. For example, a student interested in animating could use Keyframer AI to create their first short film, or an indie game developer could use it to animate characters and environments in their game. This opens up the field to a much wider range of creators, fostering diversity and innovation. Why democratization of animation is a good thing? I think this democratization of animation could be beneficial for several reasons. Diversity. When more people have access to animation tools, we get to see a wider range of stories, styles, and perspectives. This can lead to more innovative and diverse content, enriching the field of animation. Innovation. With more people able to experiment with animation, there's a higher chance of new techniques and styles being developed. I guess this can push the boundaries of what's possible in animation and lead to exciting new developments. Education. Tools like Keyframer can be a great resource for learning. They allow students to focus on understanding the principles of animation without getting bogged down in the technical details. Economic opportunities. As animation becomes more accessible, it can open up new economic opportunities. For example, independent creators can produce and monetize their own animated content, and small businesses can create animated ads or explainer videos. Okay, folks, what do you think? Could Keyframer be the future or the downfall of the film industry? Let us know and drop an AI in the comments to let us know you watched the whole video. Also, consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed this. 
See you in the next one, folks. You all take care.